Malo Nibula Kiorana Kiora Koto. My name is Fire Beck, and welcome back if you've been joining in in our daily diary sessions each day. If you have, have a quick quarter all to your family, your Fano, about what you've been doing and what you've enjoyed the most so far. Those of you that are tuning in for the first time, my name is Fire Beck, and each day we have been recording uh, an aspect of who we are for a time capsule so that in the future we can look back at this really unusual time I guess in our lives and remember what it was like and, and who we were during that time. Now yesterday we went outside and we drew pictures of our whare and so I was thinking following on from that if we were outside um, that we might do uh, today we might do a drawing um, mapping out our neighborhood so it's kind of like um, I guess like navigating you may have learnt about Coupe, Tupaya or even Captain Cook at school and how they um, navigated and created maps uh, when they were discovering lands and Pacific people across the world have created different types of maps to record their journeys. Māori and Pacific peoples across, um, sailed across oceans in their waka, their vaka, canoes, ships. Uh, they followed tracks on land and on water and they used the world around them to guide them. I know that when we're travelling and we see certain maunga or um, um, Oh, landmarks I guess you'd call them. I know that we're getting close to our destination. So those are the sorts of things that we're going to be talking about as we do our map making today. Firstly I'll just show you a couple of pictures that have come in and the first one this is Lily and she said that she likes following along and learning new skills and Lily is known and you can see her with a, a whole lot of daily diary activities that she's been doing at home which is really great to have you along Lily and I hope you've seen this today and check out these photos that I was sent from Angela and her whanau um, it was over Easter uh, so it's a little while ago now um, but look at what they did to their driveway outside with I think it was made for some chalk so that's the start and there's I think that might be Angela it's growing as they go Look at it done, amazing, the whole family out there having a photo with it, what a great effort, fantastic creativity. Then the kids attack the pavement outside their property and then uh, they said that they use some recycling um, unwanted clothes to make some scarecrows along their fence. So isn't that some fantastic creativity going on out in our neighbourhoods, well done. And uh, I've got another one here, Kenzie wanted to show us. Um, some fingerprint figures. I think they're just fantastic. Kenzie is six and I just love seeing these. So well done you two and hopefully I'll get to show more next time. If you do want to send me in some pictures, can you send it uh, with the title Daily Diary? You can text a photo to uh, 5811 or you can email it in info at hltv.co.nz and that should get to me. Alright, so today, um, along with creativity, I also have some keywords that we're going to look at, and you might want to practice spelling them as well. So our first one is really important. We like, uh, we'll use the word drawing, because we're going to make a drawing hita. And that will be good for our drawing today. The second word, tirohanga, perspective that's a really big long word in both languages there for you to learn hopefully you can quickly scribble that down the perspective that we are looking at today won't necessarily be perspective off in the distance like we've looked at with buildings um, and rooms with backgrounds when we've been drawing those we're going to look at more of a an aerial perspective so looking down as if we were up in an aeroplane looking down mapping out our neighborhood so show you some drawings that you might want to make today. Here's one that I made earlier. Um, so this is just a neighborhood map that I've made and I won't demonstrate the drawing today because it's just a series of lines. Um, so this is my whare here and this is the road I live in and my driveway 
to my whare. And over here is my little art shed where we are now. Around us we've got trees, that's my clothesline, that's our water tank. And then these are my neighbours sections. We live uh, semi-rurally, so over the road there is a paddock generally full of sheep. I haven't drawn the sheep in yet though. Um, so if I had a bigger piece of paper I could have mapped out more of my neighbourhood. Sometimes um, some larger piece of paper that you might find a, a previous segments I've used drawn on um, shopping bags and if you cut them carefully and open them out you've got a massive piece of paper there so you might want to do a large map. Um, or the other option is if you've only got a small piece of paper um, or card or something that you've found maybe draw your, make your drawing a little bit smaller. So what are some other ways that we could map other than using pen and paper? You could physically make a map maybe uh, with Lego. You could do it on the ground, build little houses and you could map your neighbourhood more in a 3D way. Um, you could, this, I've done this on the back of a, a muesli bar box, I've drawn a little house, got my little teddy bear in there for the teddy bear hunt and just blue tacked it to a cup although I found um, the blue tacks, if it comes unstuck I might need to find some tape. You could position those around, you could create your neighbourhood that way. Um, I've cut some strips of paper and put some um, collage, some um, strips down the middle to create a road. You could create a road and make it physically on your lounge floor. That might be good for our younger viewers. Another good way to do that is, um, I've got some Jenga blocks here. You could build houses and lay those out and create a map that way. You could do it inside, you could do it outside, you could do it on a piece on the pavement with sticks or chalk if you have those things available to you. Think outside the square if you don't necessarily have um, the materials that we've been using on the show, on the segment today. So, um, what other ways could we create maps? Uh, so, we had my neighbourhood map which was just literally drawn. The other thing I thought about doing was mapping out textures around my property. So I've drawn my furry and I've got my little art shed here and the trees around and I thought what textures could I map around my property. So I went outside and I looked for textures and I made rubbings, ahurua. So I laid this piece of paper down on concrete, this is the first one, and I rubbed over it with my pencil and it created this interesting texture. This is part of my deck. Um, my house is on, on poles and I put the paper up against um, where there was a knot in that pole and that created an interesting texture. I've got tree bark and I've got pavers, so I'll just show you how to do a rubbing. Um, because I could also document the texture of the plant life around my house too, so I found this uh, leaf and I noticed on the back the textures are more pronounced so I'm going to put the back facing the top, lay my paper down and do a quick rubbing over the top using the side of my pencil. If you um, use the point of your pencil you might get a lot of scribble lines rather than um, the texture so you, you might have to have a couple of practices doing that. If you're a younger student you might need to get someone to help you hold the paper down while you do the rubbing. Um, and that could be quite fun for you. So I was thinking once I've got all my textures, I would cut them out and place them and glue them down to uh, the places on my map where those textures are. So that's just another idea for you today. You could map out other journeys. You could map out your journey from your bedroom to the dining room or you could map out uh, your walk around the house, you could map out your journey that you used to take from home to school or you could go on an imaginary journey and map something out that's from your imagination. That could be quite fun while we're in, in our little bubbles too. For the senior students today um, I want to show you a few artists that have looked at um, not necessarily mapping, well it's kind of mapping in a sense they've mapped out or visualised a journey which relates to mapping, um, done it in a different way. 
So this first one is Simon Khan. Hopefully you can see that on the screen. It's quite shiny. Um, and he said, we travel many journeys, not just one. I used the Mokine, Mokihe sorry, or waka shaped vessel to signify a vehicle of travel. So when you look at that image, um, you can see his waka or waka, waka shapes and the lines which create a sense of travel. He's also included the square here as kind of like a pause or a rest. So you might think about, um, you know, life's journey and what that might look like and how you might represent that in a painting a lot like Simon Kahn. Another artist that I would like to show you is Jeff Lockhart and he's done this reductive woodcut. Um, and he says, this, well, this image is called Journeying and it relates to the migration of people ideas and cultures around the Pacific region over time and place. And so he's thinking about um, the Pacific people and, and he is Pacific and who who we are and where we've been and where, what we, where we are now, who we, where we've come from. And he's included um, waves to talk about that journey. He's got some um, Pacific uh, plants in there. He's got um, uh, some archways representing windows and his waka shapes to create a sense of movement and travel and journey as a Pacific people. And the last one I wanted to show you is Trish Kane. And I don't know if you can see the detail in that, but it looks a bit like layers of collage and paint and texture. And she's even got some navigation symbols and photos of a person in there. So she said uh, this work called One Step Beyond looks like looks at the intrepid spirit of the people who dared to cross the world to discover what was there. And so that uh, looks like she's actually used parts of maps to collage and paint over in layers in her artwork as well. That could be a good idea. Thinking about I can see the um the looks like a, a clock in there and there's a compass in there and some people sometimes people add a com compass points to show the direction they travel in so whether you're doing something like those artists or whether you've mapped out your neighborhood you might want to put a compass and maybe some directions um, in the way that you travel around when you usually um, do a neighborhood walk or something like that So once you've made uh, your map, you could add colour to it, you could add texture to it. Um, see where you can take it, see what other ideas that you can think of. And it's been really great to see some photos coming in from students, um, starting with an idea that they've got here and taking it and making it their own. It's been wonderful to see. So I think that's all we've got time for today. It's been really lovely sharing some ideas with you today and I hope to see you next time. In the meantime, you take care. See you next time. Fa kakite manuia. Yeah.